Hello friends, in the previous session uh, we have discussed about the various network theorems and uh, I hope that we have done sufficient number of problems to understand the concept behind various theorems and various uh, other aspects of the engineering circuit analysis. Now, in this particular session, from this particular session we are going to enter the new domain which is the time dependent analysis. In the previous session there was no equation which was dependent on time, everything was time independent because we had only independent or dependent voltage sources and uh, resistors which are passive elements alright. Now uh, in time dependent analysis you will have the factor of time also right. So this is going to be the uh, groundwork which will extend to transient analysis. So uh, to start with time dependent analysis we will have to at least spend three lectures on capacitors and inductors. Most probably the first lecture will be on the capacitor which is this one, the second lecture will be on the inductors, the next one and after that we will be seeing how to combine inductors and capacitors when they are in series or parallel connected, alright. Now, so what are inductors and capacitors? Inductors and capacitors are basically passive elements, alright. If somebody asks you whether they are active or passive elements, you can tell them they are passive elements, however, they can store or deliver finite amount of energy all right finite amount of energy now this word finite is important all right so remember that the word finite amount of energy is very important the word finite is important all right so basically the equations of these inductors and capacitors are time dependent equations all right the voltage current characteristics are time dependent so i'll just put that also here so the V versus I are time dependent. That is why the inductors and capacitors are used to build a lot of interesting circuits which you will be dealing in your other courses. Uh, electrical engineers might be doing in their integrated circuit course and uh, electronic engineers also have the uh, linear integrated circuit course, communication and all those courses. In different courses you will find different applications of inductors and capacitors. All right. So let us take the capacitors, let us start with the capacitor and let us start with the ideal capacitor model, ideal capacitor model. Now, now onwards I will be when I am telling the word capacitor I will be putting the word C and when I am telling the word inductor I will be putting L so that it will be uh, I can write it easily alright. So let us start with uh, the ideal capacitor model. So when we are going to begin this topic it is a nice time to redefine our uh, definition of active and passive elements. Till now the definition is not having much clarity. So let us define what is an active element now. Alright. So an active element is an element. Alright. It can provide. Alright. An average non-zero value of power over an infinite time over an infinite time interval okay now why I am defining this properly now is because usually I have told that active elements deliver power right so in this case also the inductors and capacitors should deliver power so they might be active elements but I have given you that they are passive elements so this definition takes care of that alright so an active element can provide a non-zero average value of power over an infinite period of time but in case of inductors and capacitors they can only give a finite amount of energy for a particular period of time alright they don't have infinite amount of uh, they cannot supply it for infinite time they can only give it for a finite amount of time therefore a passive element therefore a passive element cannot supply average power cannot supply average power over infinite period of time. So I hope that is <coughs> going to clear the doubt between active element and passive element. Now active elements examples are dependent sources and independent sources because irrespective of the time in which you are looking it always provides some kind of energy alright. So now let us take the capacitor. Okay. Now I want to tell you beforehand I will not be discussing about the construction of capacitors or how these capacitors work because that you should already know. 
because that you are already learning in your 12th classes or maybe in your basic electronics course we will be looking at this uh, capacitor only at a circuit point of view all right so let us draw the capacitor here okay so if this is the current direction this is the voltage uh, polarity so this is the passive sign convention this is the passive sign convention of current sorry passive sign convention for voltage and current in the capacitor so this is important all right so this point is going to be very important and the voltage current relationship is something like this i c if i put this is the capacitor current and capacitor voltage i c is equal to the capacitance c into d v c divided by d t all right that means the capacitance will have a unit of uh, charge per volts or the si unit is farad okay it is named after the great scientist michael faraday so the uh, capacitor unit is going to be farad now let us look at this equation here now if dc if the value of vc is equal to a constant value and the derivative of a constant is equal to zero right so ic will be equal to zero okay so that means for a dc supply for a dc supply the capacitor behaves like an open circuit the capacitor behaves like an open circuit and another thing you can see if you are trying to change the voltage at a very short duration of time it means that if you are trying to make the voltage change at delta t tends to zero ic has to go to infinity right ic will tend to infinity which is not practical it means that the capacitor doesn't allow instantaneous changes in voltage okay this is not possible because if that was possible if you could do an instantaneous change in voltage the current would be very high which is not possible all right infinite amount of power uh, current cannot come because no source can supply infinite amount of power so these two terms are very important that is for a dc supply the capacitor acts as an open circuit and when delta tends to zero that, that is when you are trying to do an instantaneous change of voltage the capacitor does not allow that therefore the capacitor does not allow any instantaneous changes in voltage now <coughs> internally if you look at the capacitor internally if you look at the capacitor you will see two metal plates all right so these are metal plates these two are metal plates and they are separated by a material which is usually called a dielectric and this is a very high resistance material this has very high resistance okay what that means is that the charges which are say accumulated here and the charges which are accumulated here does not combine because the charges cannot flow through this particular area now then you might wonder there are so many ac circuits etc in which the capacitor are connected and you find the capacitor current and all all right so this question had uh, confused a lot of people and this was actually explained by uh, maxwell and uh, out of that came the concept of displacement current now in case of a dc current in case a current is going like this and if you take this as a node okay you can clearly see nothing can come through here so that does not apply uh, that does not support kcl right so if current has entered to in a node it has to leave the node okay but it does not happen here so basically in changing electric fields what happens is that you have a displacement current which is equal to the conventional current luckily okay so inside the high resistance material you are having the uh, displacement current and outside you are having the conventional current and these values are the same and that uh, led to a lot of important concepts to be developed and basically whatever we are finding in electronics are actually the result of maxwell's four equations that's also a very interesting topic but that is not in our scope our scope is engineering circuit analysis and basically we are dealing with dc circuits at this point of time we will come to ac circuits later so for us at the present time for the dc uh, circuits the capacitor is going to act as an open circuit and for ac circuit the current will flow but the internal flow in the capacitor is due to the displacement current i'm not putting that down in the note because uh, i don't want <coughs> you to get confused here all right now let us take the integral voltage and current relationship of the capacitor now i already defined that 
IC of T is equal to C dVc divided by dt. All right. Now, in fact, because these are all time dependent variables, so I can put that IC of T is equal to C into dVc of T divided by dt. All right. In fact, this is the more accurate representation. Therefore, I can calculate dVc of T will be equal to 1 by C IC of T into dt. All right. Now, what we can do, we can do an integration on both sides. All right. So now, if you <coughs> do a simple integral of this, what you get is that you get Vc of t will be equal to 1 by c integral ic of t dt. But however, we are all engineers, right? We are all engineers and we know the proper definition of the integral. Any integral uh, equation will have a memory associated to that. Now, that is why this interesting, the equation is interesting because this integral actually gives us the memory. It means that the circuit or the capacitor has some kind of memory associated with that. Let us see what is that memory. So, let me take this dvc of t t once again here and uh, let me put it like this here okay so if i integrate from t0 to t1 okay that is my time interval so what i get integral t0 to t1 dvc t of t is equal to 1 by c integral t0 to t1 ic of t dt all right now if i simplify this what will i get if i try to simplify this what I get is that I get Vc of t okay, will be equal to 1 by c integral t0 to t1 ic of t dt. All right. And what do I get? I get the value to be equal to uh, plus V of t0. What this means is that the final value or the point at which uh, you are going to examine the circuit that is T1 is dependent on the previous value. So you are starting your experiment at T0 and you are ending your experiment at T1. You are uh, looking for results at T1 but that equation itself is dependent on the value of capacitor voltage at T0. Okay? Now in case the uh, at T0 if V of T0 was equal to 0 that means the circuit was not energized that means Vc of t, I can put it in a general term, it will be 1 by c integral, alright, t0 to t1 into i dt, okay. <coughs> and if t0 is some point before 0, okay, so let me conduct my experiment, this is my experiment, I am conducting it at 0, and before this time, okay, before this time, I am uh, going to consider all time before 0 also, so I can put this here minus infinity to t1 into i dt also okay now from this we can get another result because i dt is nothing but the charge stored okay so that means q of t will be equal to c into t now this is also an important equation okay so we have learned a couple of important terms here that is this is the actual equation of the capacitor okay and this is also an important <coughs> term in the capacitor and uh, we have learned that the capacitor is going to be an open circuit for DC circuits and uh, it will not allow any instantaneous changes in voltages, all right? So I think I will stop this lecture in this particular area and the next lecture might be a short lecture. We will do some problems and see to understand the equations that we have just derived, all right? I hope you have enjoyed this video today. Please like, share and subscribe the video and I uh, will see you in the next lecture. Thank you.